Merry Christmas. I know I say this every year at this time, but the world has moved on. It's no longer Christmas for them, but we celebrate always that the 12 days of Christmas means uh, starting on December 25th and going uh, for 12 days till uh, January 6th. And so we uh, thank God for the gift of our Savior Jesus. We continue to celebrate that gift. We continue to share the gift of Jesus because he is God's love for us. He is our salvation. And what a precious gift that is. It's worth celebrating more than just one day. We celebrate 12 days, but we celebrate all year long as well. So we thank God for the gift of salvation in Jesus. And we uh, hear, continue to hear God's word about all the wonderful things our God is doing in Christ. Let's begin with our opening hymn, Away in a Manger. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Father, we have celebrated the birth of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Even in this joyous time of year, we fall far short of the light to which our Savior calls us. We are sinners who cannot save ourselves. We have been hard-hearted, unkind, proud, arrogant, impatient, complaining, grudge-holding, and more. We confess all our sin to you, Lord, both that of which we are aware and that which is not known to us. We plead for your mercy and forgiveness, as you have promised. Amen. Salvation unto us has come. Jesus was born into the world to fulfill the Father's will, that the world not be condemned by him, but saved. In the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another as you have been forgiven. Amen. 
the Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations. And all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. O oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our Maker and Redeemer, you wonderfully created us, and in the incarnation of your Son, yet more wondrously restored our human nature. Grant that we may ever be alive with him who made himself to be like us, through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear now the word of the Lord. The Old Testament reading is, comes to us from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 61st and 62nd chapters. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its sprouts, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to sprout up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to sprout up before all the nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her righteousness goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your righteousness and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the Christmas gradual. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, the fourth chapter. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the verse of the day. Alleluia. 
My eyes have seen your salvation, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice, according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. And a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him, to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We sing our next hymn, What Child Is This?
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Wide is the path that leads to destruction, but straight and narrow is the path that leads to life. As we human beings are headed down the path of life, we by nature, in sin, are heading down the path that leads to destruction and death. And unless God were to intervene, we'd all head straight for death. But God did intervene. He put a big obstacle in the path of death. He put a big rock, and that rock is Jesus Christ. And the rock is so big that anyone walking down the path is going to run into it and have to stop. The rock stops us dead in our tracks. God pronounced his judgment on sin. He laid all the sin of the world on Jesus and he put it to death. So Jesus came into the world to save us, to rescue us from death. He is the one set up by God as a roadblock, a big stone in the way. As the man Simeon prophesies to Joseph and Mary in our gospel reading for today from Luke chapter 2, Simeon says, This child, Jesus, is appointed. And that word appointed has the idea of God purposefully and strategically setting Jesus in place, spreading like you might spread out a rug or a placemat, or like you might strategically move a chess piece. And for what purpose has God placed appointed Jesus? Simeon says, for this child is appointed for the downfall, the crashing down, and the rising, the same word for resurrection, of many in Israel. This child is appointed for the downfall and the rising of many. Even from among God's own chosen people, that's what Israel means, Jesus is going to divide them, and many will fall, and many will rise. But it's all going to happen because God has placed his speed bump, or even more dramatically, his big boulder in the road of death. It is a sign, God's great sign, to let everyone know that this road of death is closed. No one should go that way. There's a detour. So stop here and go no further. So here we are, traveling down the road, and we come to this big rock. No one can get around it. It blocks our way. How can we continue on our destination of life with this big stone in the way? We can't. The Bible calls Christ a stone that makes men stumble and a rock that makes them fall. He's a speed bump. He's a big obstacle in the way. This rock is so big that when we're standing underneath this rock, by this rock, we can't even see heaven from here. This rock, Christ, stands between us and God. No one goes beyond this point without going through me, says Jesus the rock. Don't continue on this road. It only leads to death. There is a detour, and I am it. And this rock must be dealt with. There is no ignoring it. And so God, who put, put the rock there, the rock of Christ, intends to stop people. And he's asking, how are you going to react to this rock in your way? And when you see this rock, what do you see? God holds Jesus before our eyes. Jesus, the precious 
gift of our salvation that the man Simeon holds. He is the one we sing about in O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, when we ask God to and close the path to misery. He's the one to close the path to misery for us. Now he stands in the road as a sign, as a roadblock, and he says, you don't want to keep going this way. I've been there. I've seen it. Come this way with me. Now, a person can either ignore the words of the rock and try to kick it out of the way, so to speak. Get this thing out of my way. I know the path I need to walk on. I'm not stupid. I've been walking this path my whole life. But of course, there is no moving this rock that's in the way. God put it there, and it will not be moved. So people who try to continue on their way will trip over it, and their downfall will be with a great crash. Wide is the path that leads to destruction. Now, you don't have to read very far in any account of Jesus's life to see times where Jesus seemed to just get in people's way. He confronted people and was offensive to many. There just wasn't room for Jesus in their religion, in their way of thinking, in their way of life. He confronted them with the idea that they were on the wrong way. But they refused to believe that he could help. Sadly, the same thing happens today, every day, all around us. Jesus is the cause of the falling of many people. To those who don't believe that Jesus is the way to God, or maybe they don't believe there is a God, or a heaven, or a way to get to to either one, then Jesus the rock is a stumbling block that's going to trip them up every time. Some even think that they're not on the wrong path. They believe they're on the right path in their road of life. They don't even know that it's really the way of death. And when they encounter Jesus the rock in the road, they're going to try to keep going their own way. And they will fall. The rock bids us to surrender. You can't go any farther. And this isn't the way you want to go. I am the way. God has provided the way in his son Jesus. And as we climb up onto the rock, we stand secure. We will not fall. We have a firm foundation in this rock. It is the way to our Father in heaven. You and I who stand on Christ the solid rock can take comfort in the fact that this rock is immovable. Immovable. God set it up and it's not going anywhere. What God does, no one undoes. This rock, this sign that God set up in the road is supposed to be in everyone's way. God says in, through the prophet Isaiah, By me every tongue will swear. When people come across the rock in the road and, and they try to kick it out of the way, only stubbing their toes because that rock won't move, people will swear, all right. But when people climb up onto the rock and cling to the rock in faith, then we will swear too. We'll swear that this is the only rock by which we stand firm and are saved. But all those who rage against the rock will be put to shame. They will fall and they will not be able to get back up. Jesus is the rock of our salvation our foundation, our mighty fortress of protection. He's solid. He's strong. 
he will not be moved and neither will we be moved or shaken who stand upon him. So in today's gospel reading, Jesus is a little baby and his parents are bringing him to the temple in Jerusalem to be circumcised, to be dedicated to the Lord. And this man named Simeon takes the baby Jesus in his arms and he says some amazing things. He said that now seeing this little baby was to see the very salvation of God. This was the precious gift of God to his people. A light for revelation to the Gentiles, meaning that in Christ, all people of the entire world may now come to know the way of salvation, the way to be saved from death, the way of life eternal. Jesus is that way, the way to God, the way to life. Simeon also called Jesus the glory of your people Israel. Jesus is the glory of God's people. He is our gem. He is our treasured possession. He is the, all the richness of God, all of God's gifts, all of God's own self in human form come to be with us. Jesus and Mary, or, I mean, Joseph and Mary, thought all these things that Simeon said were pretty amazing. And of course they were. But Simeon had a couple more amazing things to say. First, he says what we've been talking about. This child is destined to be the, the cause of the falling and rising of many in Israel. By Jesus, people will either fall or rise. They are either condemned to death who refuse to believe in him, refuse to accept him as the way, or people receive Jesus and follow him as the way, and they rise to life. They who find in him as the way to life with God in heaven forever. And then Simeon also said to, to Mary, as he's holding Jesus, or maybe he's given Jesus back to Mary at this point, but he says, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also. He knew that Jesus had come to save the world and that he would do it by dying in our place. And standing at the foot of his cross and seeing her son die, would pierce through Mary's soul like a sword. Simeon knew, and the world would not understand how a man dying could save the world. It would seem like foolishness to those who are perishing, Paul says, but to us who are being saved by Jesus. His death is our life. By his death, we are given life, and by his resurrection, we have the guarantee that we too will rise. God set Jesus up for that purpose, for the falling and rising of many among God's people. And then Luke uh, finally uh, concludes our reading for today and says, And the child grew and became strong. Yes, our Lord Jesus Christ the rock is strong. He is strong for us, and we find strength in him, the strength to stand firm in the way. He is the way, the way to everlasting life. Amen. And now may God's peace, which goes beyond all that we can understand, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. We confess our faith in the saving acts of our God with the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, 
very God, a very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we pray as Christ our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>